Consult a doctor before starting any diet or exercise program. Many of these exercises and routines are extremely strenuous and performed by experienced and trained individuals. Consult a professional trainer before attempting any of the exercises or workouts featured on this program. So today, me and Hannah packing up all our stuff, getting the boat cleaned up, ready to go down to Louisiana to film my fishing show, Saltwater Experience. But I won't miss a single workout on the road. While I have to take a whole bunch of gear down there with me, a bunch of camera stuff, I am going to find a way to fit in a little bit of workout gear, two sandbags, a kettlebell, and a weighted vest, and let's see what kind of workouts I can come up with on the road, on site, little amount of time, and no gear. Not too long ago, I had let it go. 50 pounds overweight and going into my 30s, I had to do something to turn things around. With a garage, a few heavy things, and a group of friends, I'm trying to discover for myself the truth about fitness. Who am I? I'm anybody. I'm you. And I want to know the fitness truth. Fitness Truth, sponsored by Reebok. I was out filming an episode Ryan of my Reverend. fishing show, Saltwater Experience. Fishing can actually be a pretty physical sport. Even though my days can be jam-packed when I'm out on a show, I make my workouts a priority. Plus, when you can work out anywhere with anyone, you can bring other people along on your fitness journey. I got to work out with my friend Rich Tudor and our photographer, David McLeaf. So after fishing all day, we're gonna go out for a sunset workout and the guys are in for a real treat as we turn historic Fort Jackson into a training facility. We've got another day where we're gonna be, you know, traveling without a whole lot of stuff, certainly without a gym. And we also have a situation where we have uh, myself, who's been doing this for a long time, Dave, who's started in the last year or so, and then my partner Rich is gonna join us too. So we're gonna have three different uh, skill and fitness levels and we're gonna create a workout we can all do all, all do scale it back and do it with minimal or no equipment so we're gonna start the workout Dave and I are gonna go ahead and run down here to this fort um, that's a couple miles away Rich isn't quite there yet so he's going to drive down there and meet us and then when we get there we're gonna use the uh, the environment was there to uh, create a nice workout and um, you know it's gonna be something that we're all gonna do at our own skill level and uh, should, be, should be pretty interesting, but I think you'll see that you can make a workout anywhere with anything and you can work out with someone, you know, despite their current fitness or, or, uh, or skill level. So that's what we're off to do right now. So this old fort's got everything, stairs, ramps, lots of open space. It's gonna make for an awesome workout, but I'll tell you, it was a little bit intimidating to some of the crew right at first. Very intimidated because these guys are in great shape. Um, David's, you know, young and, and, and you know just incredibly strong, and and Tom's been doing this for so long um, that I'm very intimidated to go work out with them, but um, didn't know what to expect. All of my workouts are functional, natural movements that human beings were designed to do. We use a lot of heavy lifting, and you know what? You don't need a lot of special equipment or a fancy gym. So here we are um, down here in Louisiana. We're filming for a show. Uh, just like Tom does it every time we're filming or together, he's, he's working out. Um, he decided, you know, after a long day of fishing, he's going to um, go work out. We got uh, David with us, who, who's, you know, been crossfitting for a while and is in great shape, always has been. Well, you know, every time I'm down uh, shooting with Tom, whether it's in the Keys or, um, you know, Louisiana or wherever we travel to, we're always doing some kind of a wad, some kind of a workout. They worked out one day and, and, and uh, um, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go work out with them. You know, it all depends on what Tom brings. You know, you, sometimes he'll bring a barbell with some bumpers. Sometimes he'll bring kettlebells or sandbags or, or something. A he even brought a rowing machine last time. So um, you just never know what he's going to come up with. And this time, you know, we just happened to be by Fort, Jeff Fort Jackson here and, uh, you know, saw the stairs. Um, he had a sandbag, two sandbags and a kettlebell. Mississippi River is just on the other side of this levee so we can figure out you know how to use what we've got around us. We've got the levee, we've got the stairs, we've got something up on the top that we can put 
the sandbag on or jump on it or whatever. Tom makes up a routine as quick as can be. He doesn't, not like he had it written down or planned. He literally looked around and decided, hey, here's some steps, here's some, here's some stuff, let's do it. So we're gonna run up the stairs, leave the sandbag, come back, 10 burpees, that's one round. I constantly vary my workouts to keep my body guessing and keep my mind entertained. For me, I would say endurance wads are more my weakness, so, um, but that's what ended up kind of what it ended up being uh, that we did. Um, instantly looked at me, understands my fitness level, says, hey, why don't you cut it in half? Don't carry the weight. And I'm like, okay. So here's how we're going to scale it. We scale it back with Rich is not going to have any weight and Dave's not going to have the vest and I'm going to have the vest and the sandbag. And then an additional scale back is if Rich is not comfortable with 10 rounds, then we're going to cut it back a little bit. And uh, then the idea is just to, to build up. And we're all gonna, this is gonna be a bloodletting, true paleo style. You know, Rich did a great job hanging in there with us. Fitness isn't about doing every single rep or doing what other people do. It's about starting where you are and progressing from there. You'll never get anywhere worrying about being as fit as other people. Now, we scaled that back for Rich and he had a great attitude. He jumped right in and he got in a fantastic workout. But I was able to do the same stuff they're doing, just scaling it down to where I'm at. I felt good about it. I, I, I uh, got a great cardio workout. Um, you know, kept up as far as doing the same things, just scaled it down and, and I felt good. This is, I'm done. I'm going to the top. And I'm going to do the Rocky thing. <laughs> Woo! Wow. That's enough for me. <sighs> Tom's an animal. That's all right. With limited time and equipment, we got in a fantastic workout. It was a beautiful, perfect day. But on day two, we're faced with new challenges as we put our bodies and minds through one rainy wad. The Reebok Fitness Truth, presented by Reebok. The sport of fitness has arrived. And one coconut water, the power of one. So we got rained out. We're going to go back to the lodge, we're going to watch the weather, and we might go out a little bit later. Some of the guys are going to go get something to eat, which gives me an opportunity to get in a very quick workout. Now, a lot of people think that you need a lot of fancy gym equipment or long hours on a treadmill to stay in shape, and that's just not a fitness truth. We're going to get in a very quick workout, minimal time, minimal space, minimal equipment. Okay, so we got a really simple workout. We got a sandbag and really about a 25 yard area here. We got two little walls that we can work with, and then we've got a kettlebell, and there's two of us. So we've come up with a workout. It's really simple, really easy. We're gonna one guy's gonna do as many front squats, you know, clean to the front squat with a sandbag, while the other guy runs down here, jumps over these two walls, and then does a Turkish get up with a kettlebell on each arm, jumps over the two walls and comes back, tags the other guy, and then I will do as many front squats as I possibly can with the sandbag. Dave will take off and do that, and I'll keep going until he completes his circuit. And we're gonna go through this six times and see, see, how we, see how we feel. And our score is gonna be the lowest number of reps that we get on the sandbag, okay? So on the first one, say we do 18, 
then we need to keep it at that 18 the whole time. And if we drop below that, say one round we get 10, our score is gonna be 10. So we'll see, see how many we do. And you know, quick little workout. By the time the guys get back from lunch, we'll be finished and back in our fishing clothes, ready to go. And this one is a race against the clock too. So I'm gonna take off, jump over each wall, a Turkish get up on each arm. Jump over the wall and back to you. Tag you out, you tell me what you did. And we'll kind of keep, keep track of what, what each other's doing. I figure it's gonna take us about the same amount of time to, to do this. Of course, I've got the vest on. That may, that may be a little bit more difficult for me, especially on these Turkish get-ups. I haven't even tried one yet with a vest, so <laughs> could be hard. So I've probably gotta go get my iPad and have a timer. We do this for 10 minutes. So we'll have the iPad um, with, a, with a timer, uh, just in case we ever decide to come back and, and do this again, um, we would have a time to kind of compare ourselves to. These relays can be pretty hardcore. I mean, we're doing some pretty tough exercises, and on this one, we're racing against the clock and someone else. But it's not always just about beating the clock or somebody else. You also have to beat your own mind when it says to stop. Okay. So you ready, Dave? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. But do we make it through this one? You'll have to see when we get back. The Reebok Fitness Truth, presented by ProGenX. Reset the go signal. It's a pretty tough combo. I mean, the Turkish get-ups are a killer workout on their own, but paired with the jumps, the cleans, the snatches, this thing got pretty intense. Hi, I'm David McLeaf, uh, DPT, Doctor of Physical Therapy. Uh, I'm a freelance photographer and uh, an avid CrossFitter. I'm behind the scenes, uh, snapping still photos of uh, production, you know, them holding fish, underwater stuff sometimes, and just trying to stay out of the, the video guy's way. I mean, I love taking pictures, uh, but it's not my career, it's not how I make a living. Uh, my career is physical therapy. I just graduated last May with my doctorate in physical therapy from Florida Gulf Coast University. My first exposure to CrossFit was actually through Tom, and I remember this specifically. One of the first or second shoots I did with Tom, and he was, he was starting to get really into CrossFit. And I remember uh, this workout, a volume workout with thrusters and, and something else. And I remember I got through one or two rounds, and I was borderline puking just out of it, and I was like, whoa. You know, as, as I've started to do it, you know, at a little bit slower pace, I'm really starting to enjoy it. The most exciting thing for me is, is getting through the milestones of CrossFit. Double unders, muscle ups, and as you're, you know, checking those off the bucket list, if you will, of CrossFit, you know, milestones, um, it just keeps getting more exciting. And it seems like with CrossFit, no matter how many milestones you reach, there's always more to attain because you can get a movement, you can master a movement, but then there's always the time aspect of it or the volume aspect of it. So you're never, there's no ceiling effect, it seems like with CrossFit, which is, which is always exciting because you're always striving. Not everyone's on the same level fitness-wise. CrossFit is something that everybody can do because you can scale, scale the movement, scale the weight. Being in the CrossFit community and, and, and learning and, and progressing in it and being exposed to all these people, um, I'm kind of getting my fix because I'm getting to um, kind of share my knowledge of physical therapy, biomechanics, kinesiology, whatever you want to say, um, to help other people within the gym. So not only am I treating people in a hospital you know, for my career, but I can take my knowledge and help people in the CrossFit community as well. That's the exciting thing for me. If you're new and, you, and you're interested in CrossFit, um, take it slow and, and work from there. 
the process of getting there is what's really, really exciting. Well, how many is that? Is this it? Yeah. That's tough, dude. This vest, I never feel like I'm getting air. Oh, this vest makes a whole different deal. That is a whole different, different. That's right. Because I feel the same way. <laughs> That's just because I'm out of shape. This vest. Dude, put that baby on. That is, that is a whole different stimulus right there. I should wear that way more often. Yeah. That would suck. It doesn't feel too bad. Until about the fourth round. But I mean, going down that Turkish get up oh, and yeah. getting up in the knees, I shouldn't feel like I could fill my lungs with air. And I got, you know, like 13, 14 the first round, like 10 the second round, okay. eight, no, nine, seven, 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 right at the end. That was tough, man. Good job. You know, this workout got pretty intense and we forgot about the time, but it just shows you that you don't have to have a lot of time to get in a great sweat. We just did this. I mean, we didn't even stop the time, but let me look and see what the time was. That's uh, 12 minutes, 42 seconds. Of course, we've been sitting over there for 30 seconds, so let's just say it's around a 12 minute workout. 12 minute workout, you know, we really accomplished what we were looking for. A little bit of strength, a little bit of stamina, a little bit of cardio, a little bit of endurance, a little bit of accuracy and, and uh, agility, jumping over that wall. We used what was around us in the kettlebell, the physical environment, and the sandbags. Managing fitness and travel can be challenging for a regular guy like myself, but imagine if you were trying to be the fittest man on the entire planet. We're gonna hear from 2011 CrossFit Games champion Rich Froning on how he manages his heavy workout schedule, sleep, and recovery. Uh, I'm Rich Froning, 2011 Reebok CrossFit Games champion. And the million dollar man, Rich Froning! Normal day, train usually three to four times a day. As much volume as I do, um, sleep is pretty crucial, extremely crucial. So how many hours of sleep do you think you're getting a night? Try to get um, eight, um, at the minimum seven, and then I get really angry, really cranky the next day. Um, but eight, eight is what I work best on. If I can squeeze in nine and 10, I'll, I'll try. Sleep on a reverie mattress, of course. It's adjustable bed, which is good to, you know, for Hillary's reading or on a computer or something. I use the massage feature on the Reverie sleep system. Um, I usually use it on my lower body or the foot setting. My wife absolutely loves it. She'll just turn the thing on and leave it. Travel sucks. Um, you don't realize how much you like your bed until you don't have your bed. Don't realize how much, you know, the bed actually works until you realize what you used to sleep on either. So um, travel screws with me, sleep schedule. Uh, you know, going different time zones especially, or just, you know, being on somebody else's schedule. But lack of sleep, um, especially after, you know, a tough day before, a tough training schedule, lack of sleep just uh, the next day is just, it's not a good day. Sleep is huge, especially because I don't really take off days, don't take rest days. 
I do take a rest day, it's more of like an active rest day. So sleep, sleep is huge in what I do. I, I rely on sleep more than I do my nutrition. You know, it's adjustable bed. I like to lay flat. Um, usually sleep on my back. Sleep pretty well. I love my bed. The Reebok Fitness Truth, presented by Reverie. Sleep well tonight. Perform better tomorrow. It's been a few good days for fishing and for workouts. We're on our way home now. And on this long drive home, it's really hard to eat healthy. And the truth is that fitness is about 80% what goes in your mouth. You know, the biggest part about trying to stay in shape when you're traveling on the road, I think the most difficult part is not how to get a workout in, but really how to get a decent meal. I mean. You know, when you're traveling, you're usually in a hurry, you're limited to the stuff that's on the side of the road. So what I'll try to do is I'll try to pack some food, you know, but generally you're gonna run out or you're gonna have a difficult time with, uh, you know, keeping it cold or whatever. So I'll keep some some products that I like, you know, the, the Lara Bar, this thing has virtually nothing in it. Let's see what this is, uh, dates, unsweetened bananas. That's all that's in that dates and unsweet bananas. So that's not too bad. I got some pecans, I got some beef jerky. But you know, that'll only get you so far. So when it's time to actually eat a meal, I'll use my iPad here and try to find, you know, a steakhouse. And I found a Longhorn Steakhouse down the road. We're gonna go there. And I know that there I could get, you know, a steak some vegetables, probably a sweet potato, something like that. And that's gonna be enough to, you know, hold me over until I can, you know, get back to eating the way that, that I wanna eat. And um, assuming this is it, and you know, it's really, really easy to fall into the trap of just eating the fast food, whatever's on the road. But with the, with the software, you know, that's on the iPad, the map software, you can look ahead. I just put in steak, put in steak right there on the map. Boom, and I found out that that you know not only is there a uh, a uh, an Outback Steakhouse, there's a Longhorn Steakhouse, there's two other steakhouses up here. So you know, at any of those places, it's not not the best, but you can get a good meal on the road. So that's what we're getting ready to do. So after you work hard and play hard, sitting down for some slow food is not only healthy, but it's a good routine. I would like to have the outlaw ribeye, medium. I will have a sweet potato with nothing on it and broccoli. Do you have broccoli? Yes, I do. So I'm not just eating, I'm fueling up for my next workout. That's the best fast food there is. On the next Reebok Fitness Truth, we're going to stop on our long drive home from Louisiana to visit our friends at CrossFit NOLA to do the third workout in the 2011 CrossFit Games Open. Then we'll repeat that workout right in the comfortable setting of our own garage. We nailed the shoot, man. We nailed it. We came, we saw, we kicked it. And start acting. You have plans that would keep you alive. You have the access to the Seeing some ties of that, too? Yeah, I think we're waiting.